So, there's been a bit of controversy around Sabine being stabbed and surviving in Ahsoka. The main crux of the argument is built around how it's unrealistic that Sabine would survive, and that she should die like how Qui-Gon dies from his stab wound in The Phantom Menace. Hello and welcome back to Vault Holocron, where today I will answer, is Sabine's survival realistic? Disclaimer, I am not a doctor, but I'm also not completely clueless about the human body either. So, first, let's look at how realistic it is for Qui-Gon to die from his wound as a baseline. Medicine seems to be very advanced in Star Wars, so I will give what I deem to be reasonable consideration. It's not completely clear as to where Qui-Gon is stabbed, but I make it to be roughly here. So, let's take a look at the damage. Here, it seems that there would be damage to the liver, spine and circulatory system. First, let's look at the liver. The liver has countless vital functions for the body, and so you may think that this is really bad for Qui-Gon. However, this damage is not causing him any immediate problems. First of all, he still has a lot of his liver left, and so has a lot of residual function. And secondly, many of his worst symptoms would take a while to appear. Adding to this, removing part of the liver is an operation done in hospitals already, which makes me confident in his survival. So yeah, I would say that Qui-Gon is good to make a recovery so far. Next, let's look at the spinal cord. Severing the spinal cord is always very severe, but is it deadly? Well, the main factor for survivability is whether the phrenic nerve is damaged. This is because the phrenic nerve controls the diaphragm, a muscle just under your lungs, which contracts and relaxes to control your breathing. This means if your phrenic nerve is severed, you suffocate. But is Qui-Gon at risk of this? Well, it's a bit complicated, but for the purpose of this video, I'm saying no as a best case scenario. The phrenic nerve is located in the neck, so the lightsaber isn't damaging it directly. However, with a huge hole now through the spine, its structural integrity is likely to be completely ruined, which could lead to damage to the phrenic nerve. Anyway, assuming the phrenic nerve is okay, the only obstacle between Qui-Gon and his shot at survival is the circulatory system, that being his blood vessels. This question is very difficult to answer, but I will try my best. It seems that these two blood vessels here are being severed. There's a lot of words on here, but all you need to know is that this big red one here is the descending aorta, and this big blue one here is the inferior vena cava. Plenty of other vessels are going to be damaged, but these two are the most significant. The inferior vena cava is a vein, and its function is to carry all of the blood from the lower half of the body to the heart so that it can be transported into the lungs to pick up oxygen. The descending aorta transports oxygenated blood from the heart to the lower half of the body. Now the circulatory system works essentially like circuits, and these circuits must run at all times for humans to live. This is because it constantly takes waste, such as carbon dioxide, away from parts of the body and gives useful stuff in return, such as oxygen. Completely severing the descending aorta would usually be certain death, because you need the organs it's supplying blood to, such as the digestive system and the kidneys. However, if Vader can live in a suit, I'm assuming that a hospital could replace those organs. So, all that matters now is if the rest of his circulatory system functions well enough, as the main concerns for his immediate survival is his heart and brain. This is a problem I very much doubt happens in real life, so it's way too complicated for me to say what would happen. But here's my guess of the best case scenario to give Qui-Gon the highest odds of survival. The descending aorta here is completely severed, but cauterized. This means that the blood doesn't leak, as seen in the movie. Due to the descending aorta being sealed, the amount of blood in the part of the circulatory system that is not damaged is still in the same ratio as to the volume needed in the unaffected vessels, meaning that Qui-Gon may be able to survive for a little while, long enough to hold out for whatever crazy miracle device he needs to keep him alive. So maybe there's a very small chance that Qui-Gon's death is the unrealistic one. But let's be realistic here. This is very severe damage, which may be irreparable, so it's completely reasonable 
that Qui-Gon would die from these injuries. Also, let's add some context to this scene. Qui-Gon knows that his injury is severe and that he's probably not surviving until someone can come up with a miracle treatment. Knowing this, he thinks about his training from the Shaman of the Wills on what he must do to become a Force Ghost. In a way, choosing death. This is supported by him holding out long enough to speak to Obi-Wan, but dying later. So yeah, overall, I'm branding Qui-Gon Jinn's death as realistic. Now on to Sabine. From what I can tell, Sabine was stabbed around here. Looking at the damage, the lightsaber seems to hit the liver and the ribs. I don't think the lightsaber was at the kidney, but to cover my bases, the kidney would be survivable. Even in the worst case, which would be assuming that Sabine has complete kidney failure on her right side, she's okay. This is because A. You can survive on one kidney B. Even if she has no kidney function either side for some reason, I would still give her a few hours to live at least, which is easily enough for her to get to a hospital given Ahsoka is there immediately after she's stabbed. Anyway, now that's covered, let's look at the liver. Like I said with Qui-Gon, with part of her liver removed, the rest of the liver picks up the slack. In fact, many people cope well with just under half a liver, and I would say Sabine is nowhere near that amount of damage. Plus, the liver is not causing an immediate problem to her survival, so it's just the ribs. This should be quite predictable. You don't need all of your ribs to survive. People break their ribs all the time. Even if Sabine is hit worse than I expect, Ahsoka is there so quickly that any complication is almost definitely treated. So I'm deeming this case realistic. Under this analysis here, I would say that the Ahsoka show is not unrealistic and that Qui-Gon's death is also not unrealistic. Meaning these cases do not contradict each other. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're interested in some more biology related to Star Wars, click on why Kenobi was weak in the force. Anyway, bye.